fiction, the sea, said Catherine as well. You keep returning to the sea as if you'd lost a bracelet in the water or some, some such valuable and peaceful thing. It is part of the problem of being a girl, my mother always said. Such possessions have become windows and mirrors to call a woman back to demand closing. Or as Henry James said, for he was no mother, as the picture is reality, so the novel is history, and not as the poem is, a metaphor and closed thing. Strange how I could never get back to that spit of sand, the sea warren of the Cunninger in Dungarvan Bay, for I would never want to deconstruct what was never a whole, what was tentative and poorly given, what it was that I chased after among blue razor shells. But I digress, for this is about you, returning late in the summer to a wild and restless sea. It is you, grown restless from inadequate sunshine, turning back like a pilgrim to inhale the iodine of the far west, going farther if you must, to meet the sea halfway, the sea in its life being more entrenched than us and far more Flaubertian. So what of your bracelet then? Where did that come from? Nothing but salt at the very edge of summer before it flips away forever. Salt and sand that makes a kind of mirror. Nothing but salt is left on the hard pavement out of the sea and kelp too and its iodine all strewn on the cold water. As you figure and pick among things like a novelist, the tide bathes you your whitened toes. It advances and recedes. My own beloved, the sea's drawled pathos kisses you. It is your fable spinner, giving us knowledge abundant and vicarious. <laughs>